The AirPods Pro 2 is Apple's best, but what about Sony, Sennheiser, Bose, Samsung, all the rest? We're here to help out. Khudadakh, we're DHRME. These homeboys be rocking most excellently. How does the second gen compare to the AirPods Pro OG? Well, for starters, you get a longer lasting battery both in the buds and the case and one extra size of tip. And while the OG Pro's noise cancelling was quite legit, the AirPods Pro 2 is supposedly two times quieter. Now we can't verify that number, but yeah, it's way better. For music, the 2 sounds better than the first generation, but it's just more of a refinement than a radical revolution. There is better extension on the bass and the treble, and Apple's still shilling its spatial audio drill. You may say, hey, spatial audio is not that bad. But when it comes to sound, there are simply better earbuds to be had. And the improvements aren't limited just to the sound. There's now a speaker on the case, so your lost earpods can be found. On the AirPods Pro 2, you can now do volume control. But we find ourselves asking, is all this worth 100 euros more? So which one should you get, the 1 or the 2? Well, we'd say grab generation 1 while Apple still lets you. Because on Apple's site, we see that it's disappeared. Soon you may not be able to get the first gen, we fear. How do the microphones perform? We hear you asking. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. How do the microphones perform? We can hear you asking. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. So Bose just brought out its new QC Buds 2, same price as the new AirPods Pro. So which one's for you? Bose has three things going for it and that's pretty much it. First, it's noise cancelling is super lit. Sure, the AirPods Pro 2 has really good noise cancelling, but the Bose completely drowns out almost everything. In fact, the QC Buds 2 are so quiet, it's scary. Thanks for asking, I'm not allergic to dairy. The second is the bass. Bose has more than you can handle. The AirPods Pro 2 also has bass, but your skull won't rattle. And the Bose gives you an Android app as well. But with the Bose QC2, that's kind of where it ends. The AirPods can switch between your Apple devices quick and the Bose does it in the app with a list. For every other thing, the AirPods Pro 2 is the best. You can use the right bud on its own or just use the left. Compared to the Bose, the AirPods case is small and you can't charge the Bose wirelessly at all. If you really ask us for ANC, app and bass, it's the Bose. When it comes to the rest, Apple AirPods Pro 2 goes. On the Bose, how do the microphones perform? We hear you thinking, pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. Now the Sennheiser Momentum 3 is a different beast. It's been a while since launch, so it's comparatively cheap. So the AirPods Pro 2 is better for ANC and transparency, but the Momentum 3 is not far behind and it does respectably. Its Android and iOS apps are also feature rich. You can look at a nice list and make a device switch. Battery life is kind of better, but the case is a bit thick. And of course, you get the bud design without the stick. APTX Adaptive delivers better resolution and an in-app EQ provides better customization. And if the AirPods are always falling out, Sennheiser's got a trick. Its support grips in the ear helps with better fit. Overall, if you're not a fanboy, we'd recommend the Sennheiser. But if you're in that ecosystem, you'd be none the wiser. Now it's time for the comparison that many of you want to hear versus Sony's WF-1000XM4, their premium wireless in-ears. Let's start with the price because that's a big difference. A hundred euro difference is quite significant. Even though the AirPods Pro 2 has superb ANC, the Sony XM4 has long led the industry. But while it can't stand up to the AirPods transparency, the Sony clearly takes the crown for better life of battery. And it's also got a very good solid iOS and Android app. Unfortunately, a lot of people find the buds too fat. We ain't shaming guys. In fact, we think they look swell. It's just that for many folks out there, these don't fit that well. When it comes to sound, Sony's pulled out all the stops. With LDAC, DSEE, a 5-band EQ, the hits never stop. And yes, it's had 360 audio well before Apple went spatial, and the Sony's bass can give you a full facial. Sony for its age is still a pretty good choice, but where it lets you down is the mics for your voice. How do the microphones perform, we hear you thinking? Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. 
When you think of sound, you probably don't think Samsung, but those of you into audio who know the curves of Harman will know that Samsung's Buds have some of the best sound around. And Samsung's Buds 2 Pro breaks new ground. Sure, they sound the best with Samsung's phones, but come on, we're comparing them with the company that makes iPhones. Following Apple's footsteps, there's no iOS app, so you can't make any changes, just use the default crap. When it comes to liquids from the sky or your glands, Apple's IPX4 can survive, but Samsung's IPX7 can withstand. Apple's controls are much better with the squeezing and the swiping. Samsung's touch controls can sometimes leave you guessing. Apple's ANC is way quieter, Samsung's transparency is way louder. But who are we kidding? You're probably buying one or the other. Whichever way you slice it, Samsung's good value for money. Whereas if you buy Apple, you won't miss that kidney. How do the microphones perform? We hear you thinking. Pop, pop, popsicle, ice, ice, icicle, test, test, testing. If this video helped, become a patron. It would be lovely. We've been DHRME. Namaste.